release dates. What do they mean? Because clearly they don't refer to the date of release now, do they? Here are some games that have been delayed either to this year or within this year. The Last of Us Part 2, Cyberpunk 2077, Animal Crossing, Doom, Final Fantasy 7, Watch Dogs Legion, I could go on. In fact, I will. Marvel's Avengers, Dying Light 2, Skull and Bones. Alright, you get the point. Every single game, like all of them, got delayed. The next generation of consoles is probably going to start before a lot of these games come out. So this begs the question, why is this happening? Why are so many new games getting delayed? Now one answer that immediately springs to mind is that game development is a complex process. Imagine, you're a game director working with a large team of people, each specialized in their own field, and coming together to accomplish one shared goal creating a fun video game. Now, one of the earliest and most important things you've got to do before the development process has even really begun is determine how long it will take you to create said game. And this is almost impossible to do accurately. No matter how generous you are with the estimation of how much time is needed to complete the game, it will probably take longer. Have you ever had a school or work project that you thought would be a piece of cake, one hour tops, and then three hours later you're still working on it because one little part took four times longer than you thought it would? Yeah, well at least when you're working alone or even in a small group, that extra time you're taking only really affects you. It just means you might need to have a late night or two. But in a large development team where there are multiple separate departments that are all dependent on each other, one team running behind on a task might mean another team can't even get started on their job. And then this starts a domino effect which would result in the game running weeks or even months behind schedule. And this is pretty much inevitable. I mean, when has a project ever gone 100% as planned 100% of the time? I mean, if you know someone who has done this, I'ma need you to send me a link, cause I wanna buy their book, watch their TED talk and take them out to dinner. Now when you also consider that games are getting bigger and more ambitious year over year, both in the literal size of the worlds as well as the inventiveness of the gameplay, it's no wonder that these games can't keep up with their own release day schedules. I mean, how can you know exactly how long it will take you to do something that not only have you never done before, but something no one has ever done before? No game developer sets out to make a trash game, right? No, no that, that was a trash game, not a trash game anyway. They all want to create the most amazing experience they possibly can, but sometimes their ambition stretches far beyond their time constraints, meaning the release date often has to be pushed back, in some cases multiple times over. But this makes delays a good thing, right? I mean, it was Miyamoto who said, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. And this is true. Sometimes. I mean, Crackdown 3 got delayed for so long that by the time it came out, it was outdated, looking like an Xbox 360 game in 2019. What was the reason? And No Man's Sky kinda did a reverse thing where it was trash when it came out, and then it eventually became, like, kinda good, or so I've heard. With that said, a lot of games only really start coming together in the final stretch of development, and so we often hear of games being delayed by a month or two for polish, essentially ironing out the many bugs and glitches that pop up over the course of development. Projects that don't get the extra time for polish are likely to become the targets of internet ridicule that overshadows what might have actually been a decent game otherwise. Another positive you hear for delays is that they reduce crunch, the period of time during development where employees are working incredibly long hours, often six or even seven days a week in order to get a game finished in time. And while there are some cases like the new Animal Crossing where the game was delayed in order to improve work-life balance for Nintendo's developers, in most cases, delays actually extend crunch periods 
periods rather than eliminate them. For example, despite Cyberpunk 2077's five-month delay, the CEO of CD Projekt Red stated that there would still be crunch leading up to the new release date of the game. And I think Aaron Flynn said it best when he compared delaying a game to saying, oh, that finish line we thought was here is actually six miles further. Sorry guys. So while a delay can reduce crunch, it depends heavily on what the workplace culture was like before the delay. A dev team that was working overtime with an earlier deadline will likely continue to do so with a later one. Now sure, delays are not at all a new phenomenon, but it definitely seems to be happening much more frequently these days. I mean, delays are getting announced all the time. It's to a point now where I see a release date for a game and I just don't believe it. Like I'll be watching a trailer, it says coming out May 22nd and I'll be like, okay bud, whatever you say. Perfect example, The Last of Us Part 2. They had this whole Outbreak Day event where they released like three hours of gameplay to the media, they had a whole new trailer, and they had a 10 minute demo featuring the lead designers of the game, at the end of which Neil Druckmann said this. I'm just super stoked for people to finally see the whole thing once it's out on February 21st, 2020. Huh? You said the February the 21st of the what now? They announced the delay literally less than a month after they announced the initial release date, which leads me to question. If you weren't confident in the original release date, why did you even bother giving us one in the first place? And this is a wider question for all games. Why do they reveal release dates that are six, seven, eight months, a year in advance? What's the purpose? Now obviously they want to build hype. When there's a date, it's easier to generate excitement around a game's release. You can make it something of an event. I understand this, and I'm not even saying release date reveals should be done away with entirely. What I am saying is, why does a game need to reveal its release date 10 months in advance, especially when it's still knees deep in development. This game Cyberpunk's been delayed, cancelled and revived more times than a Kanye album. Listen, E3 is looking like it's gonna be pretty dry this year, what with Sony deciding they aren't gonna show up for the second time in a row, and that's if the entire event doesn't get cancelled by the goddamn coronavirus. <laughs> But if it does go ahead, I don't want to see any 2021 release dates. In fact, when is E3 exactly? June, okay, if your game ain't coming out in August, I don't want to hear about it. Just say coming soon and be done with it. I mean, if your studio is really hot like that, you shouldn't even need to announce the game, just drop it. That's how Beyonce released Lemonade, she didn't tell nobody about it. That's also how Apex Legends did it. One idle Monday in 2019, they were just like, boom, here you go, have the best battle royale ever made. Now obviously, I don't actually think this is practical advice. I understand the studio's need to tell people about their game. I'm not advocating we do away with game reveals. I think teaser trailers two or even three years in advance are fine. It's nice to know what a studio is up to, especially with development cycles getting longer over time. What I am saying needs to change is release date reveals because we're literally at a point now where people see release dates and they mean nothing. I mean, a game could announce it's coming out on the 32nd of October. I'd feel no different. So why don't these studios just wait until they're absolutely certain the game will come out on time before they announce the release date to the public? Well, one reason might be because it's not just the public they're trying to appease. There's a particular group of people that is often overlooked by gamers, but has one of the largest influences on the gaming industry as a whole the investors. People investing in companies like EA and Ubisoft want to know which big ticket games are coming out and when they're coming out 
as soon as possible. This is so they can decide whether to hold steady or even increase their investment in a company that has a highly anticipated game in the works, or whether to reduce their investment in a company that seems to have a pretty empty future release schedule. And this might be why publishers are so eager to give their games release dates as soon as they can. A game having a definite date of release gives investors information they can use to forecast their quarterly or annual returns, and this can boost their confidence in the publisher, thus making them more likely to hold steady with their investment or even increase it, and an increased investment means more money for the publisher to play with. And this is where the wishes of the developer and the wishes of the publisher probably differ the most. A developer would likely want all the time in the world to make the game as perfect and polished as possible for the people who will be playing it, but a publisher, while still wanting the game to be good so it sells well, is probably far more concerned with the game coming out quickly and with a release date announced far in advance. Publishers also hate delays, since these cause them to lose the confidence of their investors, as could be seen in Nintendo's share price dropping after they announced the delay of Animal Crossing. Going back to The Last of Us, I can imagine a scenario where Sony went up to Naughty Dog back in 2019 and were like, hey, so uh, when are you planning to release The Last of Us Part 2? And Naughty Dog was like, I'm I'm pretty sure we can get it out next October. October? As in October 2020? Oh hell no, you revealed this game back in 2016. I've been having investors at my ass for three years demanding a release date, and you think I'm gonna turn around and tell them it's coming in the fourth quarter of 2020? No. By then, we'll be focused on the PS5, baby. Your game is coming out quarter one of 2020. Wait, quarter one? Like March? No. February. That's impossible. We haven't even finished all 37 customizable dirt textures and Ellie's jeans yet. I don't care. Your release date is February 21st, 2020. No, you don't understand. If we rush it, it won't be game of the year. The best we can do is probably like May, and even that'll require major overtime. Okay, fine, release it in May, but for now, can you just say it's coming out in February? Because if I have to head back to the investors and tell them it's releasing any later than that, I will be eaten alive. At least give me a month to prep beforehand. Maybe I can minimize the damage. Say it's coming out in February, a month later, you can announce the delay. Sounds good? <sighs> yeah. Sounds good, I guess. I'm just super stoked for people to finally see the whole thing once it's out on February 21st, 2020. I would just like to point out, I made that entire thing up. I'm not saying that's how it actually went down. What I am saying is, it's possible. Overall though, I do think delays are a good thing, and I'm glad that publishers like Sony allow them, since some of my favourite games were allowed to be as good as they were because they had that extra development time. And a developer asking their publisher to push back the release date is like asking your teacher for an extension on your homework. They could say no. My only wish is that we stop getting these reveals of release dates that are so far ahead in the future, there's no way you can be confident in them. Honestly, that's why I gotta respect Dying Light 2. That game got delayed, they didn't even give it a new release date, they were just like, listen bruh. We don't know when this game's coming out. I mean, at least it's honest, right? Can you imagine doing that at work? Your boss comes up to you and is like, hey, where's that report I asked you to fill out? Listen, bruh, I don't know when that thing's getting done. Leave a comment below, what video game delay hurt you the most? For me, it's gotta be Uncharted 4. They moved the release date of that game from comfortably before the start of my exams right up to the middle of exam season. You better believe I still played it though. I turned on the French subtitles so I could prepare for my reading exam. Anyway, that's gonna be it for me. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.